Hello friends. The this is our uh, 30 30 seconds lecture on the history of the English language and we can see that uh, while the continuation of our last class loss of inflections continue loss of inflection. Not only we have seen uh, how it works in nouns. Now in adjectives same thing happens adjectives loss of inflections in adjectives. Now what happened is only one form remained there, just one form. And towards end of the Middle English, it became, so for example, good, you know, God only remained. Neither is there a distinction of number, nor case, nor gender. See, like I told you the example of Hindi, you know, so, so plural, masculine, feminine. We don't have any same thing today. We don't say, Buddha man, goody, a goody girl and goody uh, boys. We don't say like that. So, this. so just one word, uninflected. Middle English period, M -E means Middle English here, that is uh, uninflected. The process same as the noun. M became N and then there is um, a, a, E, O, U became A uh, and also. I have already explained this. So there is no point in again. So as a result of this word happening, you know, word order and prepositions. See when there is inflection, why inflection, why why was inflection uh, introduced like Latin or like Greek Greek language? Because to show the relationship between words and sentences. Understand that? When I say when I say like this now in Latin, laudam. Laudam Deim. Deim. This is Latin. Laudam. Do you know the English word is uh, to praise? So the, to praise. Laudam. Here it will mean I, I praise God. Now this is conjugation. Ending is changed. Here also. They laudo. Laudo. Laudare is the book. Laudo. Laudare. This is the root. And then here is Deus is the root or the nominative form. Now if I say Deim Laudam, Laudam Deim, there's no, no meaning, meaning doesn't change. Because the relationship is already indicated. Laudo is the root. But I have conjugated it, so changed its form. First person singular form of this verb is laudam. Deim is the accusative form of, accusative case of deus. So if I say deim laudam or laudam deim, meaning is the same. There is no need of, don't, we need not worry about the, we need not bother about the, uh, the order of words. But that is not, because it is an inflected language. The meaning is fixed. This means accusative. So wherever you put, it is accusative case. But if you say, uh, you have to say like this in English, modern English it is, no inflection, so you have to say, I love God. You have to say. Subject, predicate, and uh, subject, verb, and object. So word order is important in an analytic, analytic language. You can say, God love I. No, you cannot say. Or love I God. You cannot say. Standard English you cannot say. If you have got some problem in your head, you can say like this. <laughs> love I God. It's not this. But this is the point. When the language is inflected, word order is has no significance. But when the word when the language is uninflected, the word order has significance. So that is the example for this. We can take this now. Laudam deum means I love God. As an example, this is this is the, this is Latin. Okay, so the loss of inflections gave importance to word order and use of prepositions. Important point to note. Word order comes in the that is syntax, you say now. Syntax, the importance of syntax, and also the importance of using preposition. I go to Delhi, you cannot say. I go to Delhi. But that to Delhi, that is dative case. 
If Delhi can be inflected for DDK, two can be uh, omitted. See that? This is, can, it is not like that. Delhi remains Delhi, so you need to, to express the relationship between words and the sentence, indicate the relationship between words and the sentence. You require that too. Understand? See that? Yeah. So I hope you understand that. Middle English, uninflected, and so word order and prepositions come in. Word order and prepositions. Understand? Word order and prepositions. And then I guess demonstrate is the same thing. Demonstrate, you know, you remember now I say, say or that. Say, say or that, like this. Now what remains this? Uh, this, the and that. The and that. That we use today. What English was. So these ones simply disappear. No distinctions of case, no distinctions of. Uh, number, not distinction of gender. See that? Same as the thus, remember this now? You should go through those uh, areas now. Uh, thus, theos, thus, theos, and uh, this. That is this. You have got these and those today. These and those. So that's all. Two forms. No distinction. Now when you come to personal pronouns, then of course you find today in modern English also almost the same thing. We have got distinctions of play, sorry, gender, distinctions of case, <coughs> for example, you know, I, nominative, mine, genitive, me, dative, and me, accusative, singular. That you have today also. But what happened, there is also a sim simplification because dative and accusative that merge. That's why you have got him and her. To her, to him, and that is dative. Him and her, that is accusative. So, another simplification that happened is that, uh, ah, yes, it, of course, for neutral, it. Whether accusative or genitive, uh, sorry, uh, dative, it. For neutral, it. So you have got he, uh, her, and uh, him, and it. This is Dative accusative, dative accusative, dative and accusative. And also, it, in the case of it, it is nominative also. But it's simplified. Alright, are you following me? If you, if you want to follow me, as I follow this class, you must definitely go through the previous class. Otherwise, what I'm, otherwise I have to repeat the whole thing, and that will be boring for you. No? It's available no? in that. YouTube it is there, so you can stop, start, stop, start, and all this. And then we have got uh, there was another clumsy thing now that is dual number. That is normal. That is normal. <coughs> that that gone. You have only single and plural. Dual number disappeared. Well, that is a cumbersome distinction. And you remember the verbs? I told you the verbs are two. Two groups of verbs, one is strong and the other is weak. For example, those verbs that make their and other tenses by vowel chain, sing, sang, sung. This is strong verb. And it look, looked, looked. That is weak verb. Now, one of the, uh, you know this again, a, a very difficult situation. The strong, we had learned them separately. So what happened is that uh, one third of the strong verbs disappeared by the end of almost as uh, the middle of the Middle English period. And then about uh, two, uh, half of them, you can say, disappeared by the end of the Middle English period. So you have hardly 68 or uh, say hardly 100 uh, strong verbs today in English. I mean, genuine strong verbs. There are certain verbs, you know, like uh, climb, climbed, climbed. You can also like climb, clomb. Joseph uses passing some climb is clomb. So there are certain uh, verbs, for uh, uh, they have got uh, uh, two past tenses and two past participles. Isn't it? And you cannot call them strictly strong verbs. So strictly strong verbs, you have, you have got 
100 or 120 of the modern English. Early modern English. Now, a uh, slight in English is there. But anyhow, as a result of simplification, no, the strong verbs suffered like anything. Means their number. Okay. But because weak verbs, it is easy. You need only to add ed, you get past tense and also past participle. Understand? And at the same way, you can see some say, sh you have words like, you know, sh shave. Shave, you have got a past tense, show, another past tense, shaved. Yeah. Sometimes you will find this, not show. So it's not a mistake, there is a remnant of the Middle English period, that's all. So there are certain words like that also. Yeah. And along with this, you have also loss of grammatical gender. You know, it was so unnatural a gender, so illogical grammatical gender, means based on the form of the word, but now, for example, with man, woman, considered to be masculine, because the ending is masculine ending. But today, it is natural gender based on the meaning and sex of the object. So today, the grammatical gender has been replaced by natural gender. Now, that is, I say, it's not as simple as that as I am saying now, but uh, it was really a prof uh, of profound importance as far as the language is concerned. Simplifying the English grammar. But English period is famous for simplifying the English grammar. That is, shedding all these distinctions of cases, of number, of gender, or singular, dual, poor, oh, how complicated it was. So this, but now they don't have it. So this is one of the reasons why English has become a global language. It's easy to learn. In, in this way, if you consider. Right? Hey, if you say, if you start, if you can see in uh, uh, books about uh, History of English language, old English period, you see. It's like a brand new language. If you want to study old English, then it's just like learning a foreign language, even for an Englishman. And what about the people? Understand you? I hope you follow me. Yes, so one of the reasons, two, three reasons are there for this simplification, actually. One is Scandinavian words. You, you remember no, Scandinavian, we borrowed from Scandinavian they, them, their, and also are. Remember? See that? That pronouns and plurals, they straight away borrowed from this. Second, Norman influence. Norman conquest, you can say. Norman conquest made English the language of the uneducated people. Standard language and the high class people, they spoke French. So nobody cared for this. So what happened is a lot of changes happened. Lot of varieties and the changes, whatever you want, in whatever way you want to use it, you can use. So in this case, there will confusion, lot of confusion developed. This is one of the reasons why in certain dialects there is inflection, certain dialects they don't have inflection. Certain dialects they use only weak words, certain dialects they only use strong words, certain dialects strong words or weak pastures, like that. So this, after this confusion, what happened is many things lost. It is like suppose there is a, there is a kind of a, a skirmish or a fight going on. Then there will be a lot of disorder. In that disorder, when the disorder is over, certain things will become clear. Like that. So there's a kind of confusion and disorder, etc. So things became clear towards the end of uh, Middle English period. Middle English period, of course, is, uh, uh, is we can say, no, uh, the thread that is passing to Middle English is French influence, vocabulary, and all those things. You will find that. French influence, French court, French administration, French way of life, etc. So Joseph makes one of that also. Yes. No, no. And third is, of course, the Germanic languages, the characteristic of, one of the basic characteristics of Germanic language is that uh, the stress always falls on the root syllable. With the result that if three syllables, only well, the first syllable is clear, 
the second and third syllable is not clear. So, after something lost. Endings, inflections are endings. So, inflection, say for example, it is a stern, so the third point is the Germanic way of the Germanic habits, the way habit of stressing as the root cell. That is the third, third reason. First is continuing influence, second is normal conquest, creating a lot of confusion, the use of English language. English language had become the language of the uneducated people, nobody to care for. <laughs> like orphans, nobody to care for them. So English became or orphaned, so to you can say. Then at the end, there is clarity. Then you have got a stressing. See, you have got a word like stamus. Stam. And this is the Hindi. So the, you have got two syllables here. Now, the Germanic way of stressing is root syllable. Tell me this one. So they have stress here. With the result that, stam. The S is lost. Stamps. See, you cannot have two syllables uh, continuously stressed. That is, stamps. You cannot do that. Because that is your lung power. You know. It depends on your lung power. So, uh, the German people, they always gave stress on the first syllable or root syllable. Because the result that second and third syllables slowly disappear. And always, Inflections are inflectional endings. So the endings disappear. As a result of that, what happens when the English became a simple, uninflected, analytic language. Clear? Yeah, look at this. Or you have, you have the pool of this. See, so you have got stand, stanum. Okay, this is deity pool here. So this is a stand. Stand. Both are the same. Or you have got one more. <laughs> Try this. Then you will find. See that? Poor. You have got all the three words are there. All the endings will disappear in pronunciation. Stan. 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 Did you get it? Yes. Ah, that is the basic reason for the disappearance of all the inflectional endings. So English has become by the end of Middle English period. As we enter, as we stand on the threshold of the modern English period, you find English a clean, clear, a clean, clear, simple, logical, analytic language. Fit to become the language of communication in the global village that has come up. Okay? So I think you have been following me like this. Now we will get into our next will be the influence, the norm and influence on English, especially vocabulary. See, and the grammar I showed you now they indirectly helps. Now the next one is vocabulary. How English was enriched by the Norman conquest. That's what is we, we our focus is on that, not the administration, legal system. That's not. And Norman castles, Norman uh, 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 forts, Norman churches, Norman cathedrals. We are not concerned about these things now. Then we are concerned about the language, influence of the language, especially enrichment. So you can see now five now Celtic, Scandinavian, Latin, and the French. These are the four influences. Remember, actually, these four languages are European languages. So what happens is, the most of those words that we use in science, in medicine, and uh, um, in research, and whatever we say, say, scholastic matters and so on, these are words used in these languages. So you find the whole thing in English. That's why English has got a universal character. The universal character of English, it gained through these uh, invasions and borrowings. Listen that. So now we can see now. Just as we say, loss is a gain. 
The loss of infrastructure is a gain for the land. So the innovations are gains for the language. I hope you understand. You start loving the history of the English language. You start loving English itself. Because you find how it develops. See that? Just as you sometimes think about your past, now we are thinking about the past of the English. As the TSA says, pastness of the past. Pastness of the past. That is what we are now uh, enjoying, we can say. Okay? So, see you till we meet again for the next lecture. See you. Have a nice time. Enjoy yourself.